Hey, hey, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at the determinants of demand. And normally, in, the, in an IB textbook, you would see price as a determinant of demand and non-price determinants of demand. And, and all textbooks seem to divide these two things out. The thing that's interesting about it is I like to tell students, think of them as the same in that they, the, the quantity that is going to be demanded in the marketplace is going to change. But the thing is, there's just one little difference, and that is that price will mean that there's a movement along the demand curve, and all other non-price determinants of demand will actually shift the entire demand curve. And the reason for that's really simple. Price is on the vertical axis. So if, 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 if price changes, then you've got to move along the line. But if anything else changes, well, price is on one axis, and, and the quantity demanded is in the other axis, and what are you going to do? You have to shift the entire line. So I think IB economic books make it really compli more complicated than it need be. Price is on the graph. So if price changes, then you can represent the change in the quantity demanded as a result of looking at the a, a change in the price. It's just going to shift on the line. Whereas if you change something else, we'll talk about what those things are in a second, then, then you're going to have to move the entire line. And I think that um, that's an easier way of thinking about it. At least that's what I tell my students. So let's take a look. What are the determinants of demand, both price and non-price determinants? So here they are, price, the obvious one, income, price of other products, tastes and preferences, expectations, the size of the market, and then special circumstances. And, and one thing that I also tell my students is, hey, look, just think of three. Price is one, you know that, okay, not, that's going to be easy down the line, that's going to be easy. Just pick three of these. If you know three of these on an IB exam, you're going to do really well. So you don't have to know all of them. Pick three and, and know them well and be able to use them in both uh, in your evaluation, okay, in analysis and evaluation if need be. Okay, so let's take a look at them more closely. So price. Price is the obvious one, right? It gets to the root of the law of demand. Check out my other video on the law of demand. And it's really simple. If the price goes up, then demand will go down. And if price goes down, then demand will go up. Okay, and this results in the movement along, keyword, along the demand curve. So take a look at this little generic demand curve down here, right? And if, if the price is at P, and the price goes down, what's going to happen? Well, the quantity demanded is going to go up, right? Great. And if the price is at P1, and then it goes up to P, what's going to happen? Well, the quantity demand in the marketplace is going to drop. Very, very simple. Anytime price changes, there's going to be a movement along this demand curve. And you know that's true because price is already here on the vertical axis, and quantity demanded is on the other axis. So that makes sense, right? I mean, come on, it's not really that complicated. If price changes, since price is on the graph, it's going to be a movement along the demand curve. Okay, all other determinants of demand are going to actually shift this curve inward or outward. So here's the first one, incomes. If income goes up, then demand will go up. If income goes down, demand will go down. And that's the case for normal goods. The opposite's true for inferior goods, and you can check out the definitions of what those means. But a normal good is simply if income goes up, right, then, or if income goes up, then, then the more of those goods are going to be consumed. And an inferior good are things that, as income goes up, you buy less of, like cheap wine or you know, store brand English muffins or something, right? In any event, because income isn't represented on the graph here, right, what's going to happen? Well, the line's going to have to shift. Okay, so D here and all of these graphs I pulled off of Jocelyn Blink's book. If D is the original demand curve, if incomes go up, more is going to be demanded at every single price point. If incomes go down for normal goods, the, the demand for, for uh, all things is going to go down. At all price points, the demand is going to go down for normal goods. So that's income. The price of other products, okay? Now, this is assuming that, you know, this video is assuming that you have some general knowledge of these ideas in your head and kind of using this more for, for review. But substitutes, if the price of Coke goes up, then you can imagine that the demand for Pepsi would also go up, right? If Coke gets more expensive, people are like, ah, forget that, I just want a cola, I don't care if I get Coke or Pepsi. So if Coke gets more expensive, then demand for Pepsi is going to move out. It'll be an outward shift, right? If the price of Coke goes down then all of a sudden people can be like, hey, I'm going to buy more Coke. So what's going to happen to Pepsi? Well, because these are considered to be substitutes, people don't necessarily care. I know people love Coke and people love Pepsi. But if you assume that they're just looking for cola, but if the, if the price of Coke goes down, then all of a sudden the demand for Pepsi is going to shift inward because more people are going to be buying Coke who want cola. OK? 
Okay, so that's it's, that's for comp that's for substitutes. For complements, I think the best example is Kindles and eBooks, right? As the price of Kindles goes down, more people will be consuming or buying Kindles, and what's going to happen to the demand for eBooks? Well, it's going to go up. Right? More, if people have Kindles, they're going to buy more books. And if you have a Kindle, you know it. I bought way more books now when I have a Kindle than I ever did before. And what kind of books are those? They're ebooks. So for the market of ebooks, if the price of Kindles are, goes down, right, then the demand for ebooks uh, is going to go up. Okay. And likewise, if all of a sudden Amazon were to jack up its prices on its Kindles, then all of a sudden the consumption or the demand rather of ebooks would go down. Okay, so the price of other products depends on the relationship between the two products, substitutes, complements. They could be unrelated as well. But this is going to result in the shift of the demand curve, and you know that because price of other products is not on this graph. Taste and preferences. Okay, a change in the consumer's taste and preferences is when a product becomes cooler or maybe lamer. Right, And if something all of a sudden just becomes really, really cool because someone famous is all of a sudden endorsing some, some product, um, the demand for that product is going to go out because at every price point, people will be like, oh, man, I'm going to buy that. super cool. Right? And if all of a sudden something becomes really lame, um, uh, then all of a sudden the demand for that at every price point is going to go down and you're going to see an entire shift of the demand curve. Now, this could also be something like all of a sudden people find out that, you know, chicken uh, prevents cancer. Whoa, okay. So that's a change in the, in the preferences and all of a sudden that is going to push demand up for all chicken. If chicken is found out to cause cancer, well, then the opposite would be true. Okay, so of course, since this is not price and price is on in quantity, this is taste and preference is not on this curve or not on this axis, it's going to be a shift of the demand curve one way or the other. The other thing is expectations. The expectations among consumers of the future prices of a good or consumer's future incomes. If somebody thinks that the price is of something is going to go up in the future, they're going to buy it now. As a, or if somebody thinks that, hey, you know, the price of that's going to go down in the future, I'm not going to buy it now. So demand would go down. The other thing is if people are like, hey, I'm getting a big bonus this year and my income is going to go up because I have more money, they might begin to start buying before they actually have the money, which isn't necessarily prudent financial <laughs> advice, but it does happen, right? And if you realize, like, oh, I lost my job, right? My income's going to go down. I bet you that you would cut your demand for almost all products immediately. And of course, expectations of the future is not on this graph, so it results in an entire shift of the demand curve. The size of the market, a change in the number of consumers or population, if there is a massive war, and all of a sudden there are fewer people, guess what's going to happen to demand for all products at all price levels? It's going to shift inward. Right? Likewise, if there's a huge population boost, it might move out, and because demand's going to go up. And it doesn't have to be in the entire population, but let's say this is the, 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 the market for... Uh, walkers, which is what people who, who are getting older in age use in order to balance as opposed to a cane. If the, if there's a, the change in the number of consumers, your, your population is getting older, there's going to be an increase in demand for walkers at every single price level. Okay, So that, obviously that results in a shift of the demand curve inward or outward because it's not represented here on the graph. And lastly, some changes in the factors um, like special circumstances, what does that mean? Well, a change of seasons, a change of the weather, natural disasters, scientific studies, right? Might was going to result in a shift in the demand curve one way or the other. If this were the if this were the market for bathing suits and we were headed towards winter, you could imagine the demand for bathing suits would go down, right? Likewise, if this is the demand for bathing suits and all of a sudden we're headed towards summer, you can imagine the bathing suit demand would go up, right? That could also happen for natural disasters, for weather changes, scientific studies that find that something is bad for your health or good for your health, like the chicken example I used, that could also change the demand and it would result in a shift of the curve, of course, because special circumstances is not represented here. <laughs> okay, so there are the determinants of demand, price, which would change, which would be a result in a shift, or rather a movement along the demand curve, income, price of other products, taste and preferences, expectations, the size of the market, and special circumstances are other factors, determinants that would shift the demand curve either outward or inward depending on the circumstance. Okay, I hope you thought that was helpful. Talk to you in a bit.